Hello and welcome to the basic concepts of heterogeneity module as part of the Learning Evidence-Based Medicine in a Virtual Learning Environment project. So today's learning objectives for this module are going to be to first demystify heterogeneity by explaining the basic concepts of it, so what heterogeneity is and what are the types of heterogeneity that you can encounter specifically as related to evidence-based practice. Second, we're going to be talking about how to deal with a statistical heterogeneity specifically, um, if you happen to encounter it. And then third, uh, we're going to be talking about how to identify and interpret a heterogeneity in a forest plot when looking at it in a systematic review. So let's start with heterogeneity itself, the word, um, which is you know, scary to some people. It's, it's, a, it's a long word, you, you, know, you don't see it every day. But basically, if you look at it, and just think about it that it just means variability and as we are looking at the different types of heterogeneity if you just were to substitute the word variability there it's uh, it's a very uh, non-threatening way to look at it so the first one we look at it is in clinical heterogeneity and that specifically looks at the variability in the participants the interventions and the outcomes studied that's from the Cochrane handbook so if you're looking at a study, you want to make sure that, that it is focused on a specific population and it's looking at that, you know, the common outcomes, that it's not all over the place comparing apples and oranges. Uh, then the second thing is methodological heterogeneity. So same thing if you were, and that, this one looks at the variability in the study design and the risk of bias. So if you're looking at a systematic review, you typically don't want to include, you know, RCTs and qualitative studies and um, case control, and, and, and you want to focus um, on a primary um, study design um, and, um, and homogeneous risk of bias as well. And then finally, which is the type of statistical heterogeneity is what we're going to be focusing on the most, and that's the variability in the intervention effects. Uh, being evaluated in the different studies when doing uh, a meta-analysis um, in a within a systematic review, and uh, so we're going to be focusing on that piece as well. Now we talked about meta-analysis, and that basically is a statistical analysis that combines the results of multiple scientific studies into one pooled estimate or one uh, general estimate of effect. And um, as outlined as well in the Cochrane Handbook. A meta-analysis should only be considered or done when a group of the studies is sufficiently homogeneous, so there's not a lot of heterogeneity, um, so that you can get to a meaningful summary. And why is that important? Well, if you're comparing studies that are vastly different, that you know, they're statistically different, um, and you were to, to pull those results together, you're, you're not going to get to a meaningful result. And we're going to look at, at the reasons for, for why. So it's important that the there's not a large variation in the effects um, for you to be able to combine those studies together to get to a, a meaningful, um, useful result. So what happens if you happen to find statistical heterogeneity and you're doing it in a systematic review and, uh, and you come across that? Well, there are a few options of things that you can do. The first, you know, is, is to not pull the results together into a meta-analysis, as we just talked about from the Cochrane Handbook. So if you find a large amount of heterogeneity, um, you don't have to do a meta-analysis. Systematic review is not required to, to come with a meta-analysis if it's not appropriate. Um, the second thing that you can do is ignore the heterogeneity and still do the meta-analysis using a fixed effects model. And the fixed effects model is one of the methodologies within a meta-analysis that combines those results without considering or accounting or controlling for um, the potential heterogeneity that may exist. So it's, uh, it's a purist approach, if you will, of, of just taking it together and putting it in without making any calculations. And, and the opposite of that would be to utilize a random effects model, which takes the, the potential for heterogeneity and within the meta-analysis in the software that you're using, it controls for that uh, and adjusts the, the pooled effect to be able to take into consideration for that potential heterogeneity that may exist. And then the fourth option is to explore the heterogeneity. Can you explain it? Can you dive into what are the reasons why it's there and, uh, and explore that within um, your study? Now, um, going further, when specifically talking about the um, 
statistic creators near to you, you're always going to find an I square. And um, and the I square it's it's a very important statistic that was created by Cochrane and as Higgins explained in several of his papers, it describes specifically the percentage of variation across the studies that is due to a, a heterogeneity instead of purely chance. And you can see there on the screen uh, the formula used to calculate I square. Uh, which looks at the degrees of freedom and um, the Cochrane's heterogeneity statistic, the Q. Now, it's important, you know, when think about statistics and some people just look at the I square and think, oh, it's something else for me to learn and and um, and it can become, you know, scary or frightening. And the important thing is to 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 know that this was created to actually simplify and make it um, very um, easy and seamless when looking at a forest plot when looking at a meta-analysis to identify the level of heterogeneity within that. So a high I-square, uh, typically anything over 50%, you're looking at having you know, high heterogeneity, um, so it goes you know, up to you know, 100%. And then we're going to look at a couple of examples as well. Um, now, so let's look at um, two examples. One, it's, it's a fictitious example that you see there on the screen that um, I got from um, the Cochrane website, which was based on, on a blog for students for best evidence, uh, which are both fantastic uh, resources for evidence-based medicine that I highly recommend. So when looking at this forest plot here, you can see, um, and typically there are, there are going to be outlined uh, and showing you the I-square uh, in, in, a, in a place very prominent within the forest plot. So in, in, in here you see that there is zero percent of heterogeneity using the I-square statistic and um, also and because of that you know toward the bottom there you see that they chose to use a fixed effects model because there was no heterogeneity so rather than using uh, as we talked about uh, random effects that controls for that uh, potential heterogeneity not being the case here of course. Um, now there's a second way to look at heterogeneity in within a forest plot and that's what we call the eyeball test. And the eyeball test doesn't necessarily look at the statistic, but instead um, it focuses on the actual lines themselves, on the actual um, graph. So if you uh, were to look at uh, the, the estimates within the studies, the, the combined studies, uh, you see that there is not a huge variability between the confidence intervals of the different studies. And in fact, if you were to draw a line there right in the center of the pooled effect on the diamond, you could see that it crosses the confidence intervals of all the studies um, outlined there. And again, that um, that shows a 0% uh, percent of uh, heterogeneity in that example. Now, looking at a different example, this is from a real study uh, that's cited there on the bottom, you see several different uh, studies in the systematic review. And by using the same eyeball test, if you were to draw that dotted line uh, from the center of the uh, pulled effect, you see that several of the studies don't touch that line. So um, there is a heterogeneity in the outcomes there um, within the studies and, uh, and, and, the, tri and the, the fact sizes as well. So in this example, it's 85% um, heterogeneity. So you see a high het heterogeneity. So there are just, just to resume, there's a two ways, primary ways to look at it. One statistically through the I-square, the other one with the eyeball test. So, um, as a summary, you know, we have revealed the, uh, what is heterogeneity, what are the, uh, the types of heterogeneity, and how to deal with it if you find statistical heterogeneity, and then how to identify and interpret it within a forest plot. So the next steps on the bottom right, you see a Take Assessment button on your next screen, uh, where you're able to, to look at a knowledge check associated with this module, and then we hope that um, afterwards you will um, complete the course evaluation that will look specifically at your experience uh, with this module and with the overall pilot.